In Tulsa, Oklahoma, sits a little, quaint, metaphysical store that houses a variety of entities and trapped souls, and we get to come investigate. Welcome to Spiritual Rose. This shop, opened by Teresa Hunt, started in a small portion of the store about five years ago. It was even named after her mother. About three years later, they merged with the space next door and doubled in size. The larger part of the store houses a very unique past. Prior to being owned by Spiritual Rose, it was a tattoo parlor, whose owner passed away upstairs. Years before that, it was even an illegal prostitution brothel. This property has seen a multitude of activity, including numerous deaths, one even happening earlier this year. I got to sit down with the employees and the owners to discuss their experiences. Uh, my name's David Small. I'm a uh, cashier here at Spiritual Rose. Mm -hmm. Um, mainly just stock whatever needs stocked and help out where wherever we can. Um, nothing too fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So what are what are some of your experiences here? Um, mainly just in the uh, the old hallway. You would always feel feel presence watching you going through there. Um, if there was anyone in here ever up to up to no good or trying to steal or do anything like that, we would always have domino effects. We would have stuff fly off the shelves. Um, Miss Rose, the, uh, the the lady that the store is actually named after, mm -hmm. she she likes to protect us and actually watch over us. Um, there's been many a time where people come in, we don't feel anything bad off of them, but seconds later we hear a crash and then they're running out the door. Um, that's we've we've figured out that that's Miss Rose actually keeping us safe and keeping people from from. I don't want to say terrorizing, but but yeah. but stealing and and taking right. um but that's that, that's that's some of it but it's really i've heard a lot of disembodied voices the store be empty we'd be sitting there dead quiet and just can someone help me or something like that and it's it's very faint very quiet um but there's there's been several times where we've had customers come in and actually tell us that they've seen stuff or actually had people, um, whether it be Miss Rose or someone else that's some of the other spirits that are in here, um, whether it be them actually telling them something that they need to know or mm -hmm. just saying hi. My name is Addie Dutton and I am the cashier slash stalker. So what, what kind of experiences have you had? So sometimes I'll be downstairs completely by myself and I'll just hear someone say like, hey, or hello, and just stuff like that. Also, Miss Teresa, her mother, her energy is here, and if she doesn't like some of the customers, like before we remodeled when we had our hallway, like where our tarot was, mm -hmm. she didn't like someone, she would knock the tarot off, and it would do a domino effect, so all of the tarot would fall off the shelf, and people did not like it. It yeah. would go running, so <laughs> it's, she's definitely protective over the store. Have you seen anything, or has it just been voices and movement? Really just the voices and the movement. Yeah. Like I said, I've only been here for a little over a year, so I haven't seen that much. But I've definitely heard the story. I'm like in the stairway, I feel the energy and it feels heavy. Yeah, that's what she's talked about. There's a heavy feeling like you're almost being pushed mm -hmm. down the stairwell. I take my time going down those stairs. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> my name's Amber Small and I'm the store manager. How long have you worked here? Uh, four and a half years. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what are some of your experiences you've had? Because I'm sure in four years you've had a lot. Yes. Um, like if we move things, like we're arranging, and the spirit don't like the way we put them, mm -hmm. then the next morning we come in and it would be in the floor. Hmm. They'd be like, no, I don't like that. Yeah. Seeing things out of the corners of your eyes, actually watching a cauldron move forward off of a glass shelf yeah. towards you. What happened there? Because I've heard a lot of people mention the cauldron. Um, There was... People that didn't have good intentions in here, and it was a cast iron cauldron. Those things are heavy. Ah, uh, yes. And it flew off of the shelf, went in three different directions. The lid went one way, the hook went one way, and the cauldron went the other way. Didn't break anything, mm. um, but the people left. And so Teresa had come back down and wondered why. Me and Randy had replaced the other ones at the edge of the glass shelf, and we're like, we didn't. So she pushed them back. We walked around a little bit and come back, and they were in the same position at the edge of the shelf. Okay. 
And so we, we looked like weirdos, but we were all in the line <laughs> standing there in front of the glass shelf. And, and Teresa said something about, um, you know, well, if you're here, move it for me. It physically started moving forward. You watched it move forward. That's incredible. My biggest, I don't want to say fear, but where I feel the most activity is in the stairway. Mm -hmm. I can't come down the stairs normally. I have to do it sideways, hanging onto the wall. Mm -hmm. um, and there's been instances of like Teresa up at the, the landing up at the top and I'll be, you know, coming down and she'll say something and I'll turn around. I can't stop in the middle of the stairway and like physically talk to her without getting nauseous or feeling like I'm going to be pushed. Mm -hmm. Um, you can just feel the pain like somebody was at, at the top of the stairs being shoved down to the wall and I think they probably died. You think it could have been someone that you know, uh, unsolved so. murder and that's why they're sticking around? I think it was probably some of the ladies of the night that were locked in the bedrooms upstairs. That would make sense, yeah. And there's many entities that we know mm -hmm. that kind of hang around. Um, it's like the bookshelves down there um, where they're at now but Teresa's office was behind the bookshelves. Mm -hmm. And you could see an entity, sometimes with the head, sometimes without. We called him Larry. Larry. He would go in between the bookshelves. Huh. Like physically pass through the yes. bookshelf? Huh. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> but he would have like a blue uh, like work shirt. Right. Sometimes he had a head, sometimes he didn't. Mm -hmm. Next, I got to sit down and interview the owner's husband. Uh, my name is Randy Hunt. I am... I am partial owner. Actually, my wife is the owner, so I'm just the I'm just the <laughs> husband of the owner, the assistant owner, right? Yes. <laughs> how long have you? How long is have y'all done this for? Uh, my wife's done it most of her life, but in the store, uh, we started it five years ago last month. Well, uh, about a year after we opened the store, um, I uh, was I checked the cameras every morning because we got like fifteen cameras that have that throughout the store. So I uh, seen the the in her old reading room, which is kind of like this room here. Uh, I witnessed orbs just floating around. So uh, you know me being uh, logic or whatever, I have to have the science behind it. So I videoed all the cameras make sure that what my car is going by or anything kind of causing that but no it's it blew my mind yeah miss rose a lot of people have said they felt her and you know um her influence on the store like she's a protector do you feel that same way uh yeah she um she uh, back in the day she has lived with us for a long time right. off and on but yeah i can um uh, i can i feel her presence i don't ever hear her I'm not open enough to that, yeah. but you know, my wife is, Amber is, uh, but I do feel her presence and know when she's been around mm -hmm. just by the feel uh, and some of the things that happen, like, you know, uh, some of the stuff that maybe she's upset about, that she would might be buy stuff off the shelves, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The orbs Randy captured a few years ago look authentic. They don't look like dust and they definitely don't look like bugs. I can't explain it. Most of them even blink and pulsate like most orbs do. While I'm preparing for the next interview, someone comes and gets me. Something happened in the store that was actually caught on camera. Watch the paintings in the background right here. At first, I thought maybe it was the stomping up the ramp that caused the paintings to fall over. But those paintings have been there a while, and people go up and down that ramp all the time, stopping and running. They've never fallen like that. I also thought maybe his hand brushed up against the shelf while he was going up the rail. However, that shelf is a good foot, foot and a half away from the railing. Everybody that witnessed this was amazed, and we could not find an explanation. Next, I sit down with the store owner and interview her. So, for the camera, um, what, what is your name and... I'm Teresa Hunt, and the store owner. Awesome. You just knew what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's just funny. Um, I forgot the other I question. I do that a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I just thought that was really funny. Um, what what all of you experienced here? What? Um, well, we've experienced things flying off the shelves of customers, and usually if someone is in here with not good intent, um, 
things happen a lot. My mother, her spirit's here. The school is named after her. I'm her only daughter, so she's here to protect. And she's very protective, so... Yeah, so we've heard. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she tends to let me know when she's not approving of how I'm doing something by... We'll do a complete display, come in in the morning, it'll be in the floor. Mm -hmm. You get on the cameras, you know, it's just... Oof. Over it goes, and there's no reason for it. That's really cool. Um, and I've had a lamp explode one time after she got upset with me over oh, like a family the, matter. Yes, I was full, full on. I was doing a reading for this poor lady. It was her first time in the store to do reading, <laughs> and we'd had a family situation over the holidays. And um, I'm calling in this poor lady's guides and mine, you know, getting ready to do the reading. And I hear this loud pop, and I feel hot glass hitting me. Mm. And I open my eye and look at the customer, because, you know, I'm concerned. Is this person hurt? She looked like she'd just seen the devil himself, and she was scared to death. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's okay. It happens sometimes. And it was really strange, because we had two women who were older that are intuitive and readers come in the store, and they honed in on me. I'd never met them before. And they said, if you don't mind, we'd like to look in the store. There's someone here trying to get a message across to you. And I said, okay. She looked around. I showed her the rooms and stuff. At that time, we just had the bottom part. Mm -hmm. And she said, there's your mother in here. And she's very upset with you because she feels like you should have told this person in the family off instead of stopping it when you did. Hmm. And then she started giving me details that there was no way she knew, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, you're you're the real deal. <laughs> and yes, I feel my mom. So I kind of thought that's who it was, but I was trying to ignore it, you know. <laughs> and yeah, she was dead on on what had happened and everything. And I was like, okay, she's really reading it. That's really cool. But uh, just all kinds of things happen, you know. Things get moved. We watch things move. Mm -hmm. We watch cauldrons, literally. Heavy cast iron cauldrons would slide across a shelf with nothing else on the shelf moving. Mm -hmm. The shelf was level. We double checked it. I, in our offices upstairs, hear ghosts, hear people walking around, hear voices. My husband and I are always asking, Did you say something? No. There was someone who was renting this part of the building before us that passed here. Mm -hmm. And from what we've heard, wasn't a, a healthy situation for that person, and a lot of long-term bad situations that led up to him passing. Um, that just wasn't right. And then before that, of course, the building was a brothel, and so you know there was human trafficking mm -hmm. um, with people, Asian women. So there's no telling what was done before that, and we've been told by previous renters of this building that when they got it, there was locks on all the doors where they were keeping the women trapped. So we don't know what was done in that situation. Um, it's, it's an old building, mm -hmm. has a lot of history, like we were talking earlier about the uh, system that's under the ground here from the old mines. It's still there. They've been tapped off, but they're still there. And, of course, we've had two people. I didn't tell you about the second one that had died at a corner from here, right here on Harvard. One was many years ago. The other one was earlier this year, just a few months ago. I did some diggings to see if I could find the recent murder she was referring to, and I found it. The man was shot right across the street from Sphere to Rose. In fact, you can even see it in the background. A gunfight in Midtown turned deadly. Off-duty officer on our way home was driving uh, down to Harvard and saw a man down in the middle of the road. She stopped to check on him. We've, we've got shell casings that stretch about 100 yards west of Harvard down 30th Place and numerous casings and, uh, and bullet fragments and bullets in the roadway. That officer finding him dead with gun in hand and dozens of bullet casings around him without any leads as to where the suspects could be until a vehicle fitting the description of a lifted Ford F-250 was spotted in East Tulsa. There's been a lot of, of death on a lot of Tulsa ground just like this area. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, we get a lot of spirit and we think about what we do for a living. You know, we're in here calling in spirits and guides and people's past ancestors to help them get answers. Mm -hmm. Some of them leave and some of them kind of like to stick around for a little while. And they're welcome as long as they're not causing problems, you know, and they're not a negative energy. But we smudge all the time and clear and I keep crystal grids up and mm -hmm. we try to keep the energy in here very healthy and positive. Um, and I think that helps with the discernment of who can stay and who mm -hmm. has to leave. Yeah. But there's there's always activity in here, always, day and night. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, you know when the building was built? Because that was a question. I'm not real sure. I want to say maybe in the 50s, mm -hmm. um, but could have been even earlier than that because some of the, the lateral lines that they've had to work on since we've been here, they said was back during World War II wow. when those lines were used because they didn't have the um, metal to put in, so they used these tar type pipes. Mm -hmm. and that very common in this area for the structures, oh. the older structures. Older than I thought it was, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then you've had um, one other team come in, right? And then mm -hmm. someone that just did recording. Was that when this was here, or was that just when you had the other That's side? just when we had just the other side. So we're the first team to investigate this and upstairs. Yes. Okay, awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely excited for it. I am too, and I'm glad you guys are on board to do this. I'm glad you want us. <laughs> this is like, after being here for years, it's like, and, and it's a big honor for me to like, be able well, to do this. Well, I'm honored to have you guys. This is part of the original store that we first started leaking five years ago. Um, we had reading rooms back here and then one in the middle. And got time we tore walls down and spread the store out as we grew it because at first all I had was two little tables up front, you know? Yeah. And we were doing readings and stuff and I just invested everything back into it. Um, but yeah, this is where my mom's namesake started, <laughs> the store. And this is where cauldrons like this big heavy one, you fill it. Yeah, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't just Right. Off. We had them stacked like three or four on a shelf. Yeah. And some people were in here and they weren't being really nice. And it come flying off, barely missed her, and landed in three different pieces. The handle popped off, this popped off, out there. Well, they left. And a little bit later, I looked over and I said, do you guys see that? And one behind it come moving moving and I reached up and I just pushed it back in between the others mm -hmm. and it started moving again like they were like no you know it's me and then it stopped and nothing else on the shelf was moving my husband checked the level it was all good mm -hmm. so things like that happen a lot around here and then we got this part up here and redid it and so this is part of the the, what was the brothel and then a tattoo parlor and residence and all that and we've converted that into part of our store and then we have the upstairs that's also offices now which is, was an apartment mm -hmm. and if you follow me back through here ooh, ooh. It's a long <laughs> you got it. we've turned the old uh, tattoo rooms, and I'm sure before that brothel rooms, <laughs> into our reading rooms. And that's our first one, then this is ours, mine, in my Reiki room. And this is Amber's room, her reading and Reiki room. My dog. This is my husband's Reiki room. He does Reiki room. And just to note, because we didn't get it on camera, Alec, you did feel something in that corner. Oh, yeah. Right. I, don't, I don't like that corner right there. I'm a big fan. I know where you're going. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do, too. I do, too. You do need to know that in the hallway, a lot of people feel a lot of presence behind them. Um, like, especially coming down, they feel like something's fixing a shovel. I have felt it behind me going up. Um, We've even redone the stairs, but it still has a very, you can feel the energy, like, right. this has happened before to someone. 
You think that someone died, and that's why you have a constant I think it's feeling a of possibility. Yes. This is mine and his kind of quiet getaway when we need to, uh, to just kind of chill and relax and, and just get away from all the energies. We have a kitchen area in there, and then our offices. This is one of my And then in here is the creepy bathroom. <laughs> and this office, especially when I had my stuff in here, but we've moved Amber up here, so my husband and I will both be in the other office. This, I would be sitting at my desk here, and I could hear somebody walk in and look over, and you see a shadow. Like, just kind of, you know, check in on you, like, hey. Peeking around the door. Yeah, it, it would literally look like this, like, just the shadow form go. Mm -hmm. oh. But it felt mannish, mm -hmm. you know, like it was a man. And I think could be possibly the owner of the tattoo place when he passed. I, you know, just, hey, why are you in my space? Because he died up here, right? He died up here. Do you know yeah. what room in particular, or is that? I'm thinking he was actually in what was their living room, or mm -hmm. break room. Um, I know that that was their bedroom, but because his health had gotten so bad, they had him on hospice and had him in the living room, so. Hmm. Yep. Make sure you can debunk it. Uh, I'm working on it. I... There's a... Wait, hold on. So it's a, you get it off the door. Yeah, it's 2.1. About up here um, as well. Let go... I guess it's the door frame. Is it the door handle? No, because it's right here. Yeah, it goes up to a 2 right here. Do you know if there's any like electrical stuff? like? If it was electrical, it would be higher or something. Is, and that door is the heater. If it was electrical, through here it would be higher. Electrical is like... Uh, here, we're good. That. Did you check in? I haven't, no, I haven't jumped in. Oh, that's a spike of 1.3. It's a steady 0.7 right now. Are you getting spikes on that door frame? Not anymore. I like, as soon as I crossed the threshold, that's when I got the spike. It's moving. <laughs> oh, 0. 0.2. 0. 0.3. Dude, that's weird. I heard like dog footsteps when you said that oh, over there. Yeah, you'll hear that too. Yeah, I, we, we talked about it previously. Yeah, you, you didn't know. Um, you said there was an animal that would come through. Yes. No, just when you open the door. <laughs> um, Ominous. You, you you would feel something brush through mm -hmm. your leg. Well, and you can see the shadow of it. Really? Yeah. And you know, we don't know if it's a dog or cat. I don't know. I, it's either a smallish to medium dog or a big cat. Mm -hmm. house size cat. This, uh, which we haven't remodeled yet. Sorry, guys. This is the back porch. Back porch. <laughs> Gotta love it. Low thing. <laughs> and uh, everyone God. that has come up here is like, this needs to be a seance room. There's a lot of spirit here. Did, did you jump put these in, or were these? We uh, we laid those out here. We were actually going to use them in the kitchen and didn't have enough, and so we just put it there to set chairs on because right. this floor is like yeah, I see it a little giving, and I'm not comfortable yeah. with that. <laughs> I'm not giving So where is this above in the store right now? Above Randy's space okay. and the break room. Okay. Yeah, Randy's uh, Reiki room and that break room. Yeah. I can't feel a lot out here, just I do have a fear of heights. Yeah. And so that's why you will see me staying back this way. <laughs> <laughs> but so I can't tell if my uneasiness out here. I don't have a fear of heights and I can also already already tell. You can feel it. It's not as heavy. I think it's because there's not a Where roof and no right? walls around us. And you might check that closet too. You what? You might check that closet with the meter. Did they go out back? 
Yeah, yeah. we did. I'm scared. <laughs> you can turn that lamp on if you need to. Okay, good. <laughs> And then you can twist around. There's a monster in the closet, Franklin. <laughs> step uh-uh, up on uh-uh. in there. Step nope. up on in nope. there. Don't nope. <laughs> see it. There's, um, is it, what is that? Like something into the ceiling of the like attic? Just, uh, I see. Not really an attic. It's, it's not really trough. an attic. Yeah. I don't yeah, like that. No, it's thank you. Sorry, right, I didn't even look at my screen. That's that's terrifying. <clears throat> throw the IR on. Oh yeah. You know what someone's happening? We finish the tour and we wrap it up for the night. A few days later we arrive 30 minutes before closing and start setting up our equipment in the back reading room. Jesse and I grab a millimeter and a camcorder then head upstairs to do a millimeter sweep. Hi spirits. It's me, boy. It's me, ya boy. What? Temperature drop? Oh. Dude, what the crap? What? Is it fluctuating from 77 to 73? Not temperature, it's the EMF I'm focusing on. It keeps spiking. Okay, but I was right here and it spiked. You saw that, right? Yeah. You heard it, at least. Huh. Immediately upon entering the room, we begin getting millimeter spikes that we can debunk. Will you, uh, make yourself known? Try to grab that box here, uh, that, that, that green light. Um, try to, try to make a noise for us somewhere in the room. Can you make a noise for us? Bang something, move something. All right, we're gonna move. It's went to a 2.7. What the crap? Is there a walkie up here? Uh. I think I took it downstairs. Yeah, I grabbed it off that table right there. Why does it keep spiking randomly? Um, I can't. It's nothing. I just got near the table and there's nothing on the table. Yeah, and when you walk past the shelf, remember when you held it up to it when you passed it, then it yeah. go off either. What the crap, dude? This is, awesome. this is active. This is active. You want to try the back room? You going first? Yeah, let's go. Alright, we're gonna try the back creepy room here. I'm stupid, but I have that stupid. <laughs> Alright, Jesse. Uh, hey! Shut the door behind you. Shut it? Shut the door behind you. Okay. Uh, if you're in this room, can you try and grab this black box out of my hand? Or make a noise, throw something, bang on something, anything really? I'll hold it out for you. We don't mean harm, we're just here to communicate with you. Somebody's upstairs. Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah, uh, you guys weren't in there? Where, do, where does he want it? Dude, there's like... Did you see somebody in there? Well, I I thought you guought to prank me because I heard like a shh. I thought you guys were like about to like jump out at me and it sounded like there was movement. What the? Ring the millimeter, shut the door. You said what? 9.0, that's the it's highest spike I've seen. It's not a constant spike. Like, it's constantly there, but the numbers... Keep Open the closet. Oh my god, it jumped up to 23. What the f***? What the f***? <laughs> I gl- happened to glance down at it, and I seen the highest 23. Okay, there's nothing in here that should be causing you, Muff. Ten? Eleven. I'm back down to four. What the f***? I'm gonna 
gonna shut this door again? Yeah, I'm gonna go this way. And then it's gone. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Dude. There's nothing but pillows in there. Yeah, there's nothing but pillows, lotion. Is that? No, that's... What was it? I don't know. We begin getting electromagnetic field spikes near the door of the closet. So we tried to open the closet and see if there was anything inside that could be causing it. As soon as we do, the millimeter spikes up to 23 milligauss, and we don't know why. There's nothing inside the closet that should be producing any EMF. Alright, I'm leaving here by yourself. Right away! Not after that hey! Hey! Give me that, give me that real quick. Yeah. Uh, hey, we just had something crazy happen up here. We, uh, we keep getting crazy EMF spikes. Like, the highest we got was 9, no. and we can't explain it. The highest we got was 9, and we can't explain it. Uh, it was in the hallway. Next to Teresa's office, there's a closet, right? It was at that door. That door went up to a 9.8. Okay. And then we open the door, 11. and it jumps up to a 20. 10. 30. 35. We just got a 35. 51. 7. 89. Is this the walkie? Damn. That is not the walkie. We just got an 89. Yeah, no. And I want it. And it's not the walkie. Is no, it? dude, I'm not even near him. It's, it's constantly it's going off. 9.0, 10, You're in the background, I thought that was the walkies. Uh, I'm gonna come up there. Do you guys hear something over there? Copy. What, what do you hear? There's not someone else up here, is there? No, it's just us, dude. We then go out to the balcony to start investigating out there, but we receive nothing. Then I notice something interesting. This place has an increase of activity I've never seen, right? And at first I thought it was because it was a metaphysical store, like this is all its all about energy and stuff, right? But the spirits still have to draw power from somewhere, they have to draw energy from somewhere. And they got power lines. A lot of energy they to have draw from. A lot of power, this, is, this has got to be a reason, this is powerful, this is strong, because they're drawing all their energy from here. And I want to yeah. digital recorder session up, I want an EVP session up here. Is there anybody in base camp right now? What the f What was that? What? So the, are the walkies dying? Can't be. They're better. No, too bad. Yeah, it's two bars of life. Alright, repeat that one more time, because we're getting weird interference. Hey, are you guys trying to talk to us in here? Yeah, can you hear us? It might be... Uh, for a second point. there, it wasn't working at all. Is there anyone in base camp, by the way? <laughs> we're going to come down there and talk to you just so we can hear what you're saying. We'll be there in a sec. They mentioned it off camera. The room Caden and Rossi were in was Randy's room. The same room Alec had a weird feeling in a few days earlier. We were in there and we weren't able to understand you or hear you for a minute. No, the walkie was being weird. It was like, well, we, had the, we had the door no, shut. No, like it wasn't off. working. We were in this creepy room. Like you could hear us, you couldn't talk to us? Uh, both. Like for a second, it just like, whenever you tried speaking, Nothing went off. We were, twice. we were, we were asking if there was anyone in base camp just watching orbs and stuff. Caden, yes. You know, go with Jesse, you. I'm sending you upstairs to do uh, EVP sessions. While Caden and Jesse are upstairs doing an EVP session, Alec and I go and investigate Randy's room. Can we turn off the flight back here? Yeah. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's slow though. From me and Alec. Did you just turn it off? No. Okay, well we're trying to make. Dude, that thing's. Are you recording? I am. I am. It's back up. Can you leave it off, please? Thank you. Alright, that's good enough. It's... it's not... I don't think we can go get this. The light's back on, by the way. Hey, we're stepping out of the building for a minute. Hey. Quick question. Yeah. That light by the back door, does it... Flicker, or like go off, fade off, come back on. Does it just stay on? Batteries almost It just dead. stays on. What? Okay. It's doing that. <laughs> we just got back there to go into Randy's room, and it's no, it fading doesn't. on, fading on, off, on. Let's not do that. Okay. It's plugged directly into an outlet. Yeah, it's plugged directly into an outlet. It should not be doing that. No, it should not be doing yeah, that. With your hands off. What? Good group of people, man. Honestly, dude, I love them. I like, love them. like, let's. I don't know, dude. I'm gonna bite tomorrow for Thanksgiving. Stub your toe. <laughs> Please tell me you didn't get that on camera. I definitely did. <laughs> oh, no. That's another one. That's another one <laughs> for the <laughs> list. What? Oh my god. As just soon as we got again. over here. We're gonna. 
light in here, and then... Mm. Oh, you're... You are making it... Oh. Try again. Here we go. Lights out. God, I don't want this. Full fear, baby. Feel it? Yeah. If there's anything I thought present, it was to my left. If there's anything present here with us, will you set off the EMF detector right here? I feel it? safer in here, dude. What? There's, there's, there's something with me that's in the kitchen. No, I don't feel safer in here. Dude, I don't like yeah. that. Look at this, man. Look. Will you uh reach out and grab this? Uh... If if there's anything in here. I don't want to, like, get in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm jittery as dude. Is there anything in this bathroom here with me right now? Please don't go off. Please don't go off. <laughs> dude, I don't... Yeah, let's do no flashlight crap. Yeah, I agree. I'm trying to... It's so hard, because the way I, I... Like, if I focus on the camera, I can't feel stuff as well. I'm going to be running ghost tools as well. Just because... Oh. Yeah, I'm trying to Is there anything in here with us right now? Let me try to grab this black box, knock it out of my hand or something. Something that's never walked this earth in human form. Uh, have you guys got anything? And uh, the answer to your question is yes. I need to put it on the walkie. Seriously. We're getting weird spikes, but nothing too bad right now. Okay, so it's moving up. Alrighty, are there spikes in the lane or unexplained? There are unexplained in the That is not because of the walkie. If you heard a beep there for a split second, that's not from the walkie. It's not right, on my phone, my phone is sitting here, sitting in the same spot it's been sitting in. I can feel your presence. I know you can see me. I know you can stand next to me, I'll know you're there. I'm going to ask this question again. Are you a ghost or a demon? Not have gotten much, Alec returns to base camp. After being upstairs for 20 minutes and receiving no EVPs, Jesse and Caden come back downstairs. We regroup and decide Rossi, Caden, and I should go upstairs and perform Spirit Box, while Jesse gets shut in the room he's scared of the most, Randy's reading room. I hate you with a burning passion. I don't. You're shaking so bad. Yeah. We just lost him. I'm, I can't. You got this, dude. I can't. You got this, dude. No, I don't think you understand. Why not? I can't. Where's my fork here? You got this, dude. No. You got this, dude. You got this, dude. I believe in you. All right. Well, I am here alone. Because why not? If you want to talk... And if not, that is okay too. You can just make this top number go up for me. That'd be great. If there's a spirit present in this room, actually, let me level with y'all for a second. So we believe there's spirits in this room, and we believe y'all are women. Uh, it is believed by the store owners this is where the prostitutes were kept against their will. Is that true? We just want to talk to you, make contact, see if we can uh, try to help you out here, okay? So in my hand is a spirit box. I want you to talk as loud as you can. If that's true... Fuck. Here, let me... Uh, uh okay, give us uh, just a couple of minutes, alright? Alright. Alright, we just want to help you, just want to communicate. I know you haven't spoken in a while, so you're going to have to remember your voice. If you were alive, if it helps, try to scream it at the top of your lungs, alright? There we go. Was that a woman's voice a second ago? Yes. That sounded like it said help, didn't it? 
That I was can't. that was a woman's voice. You heard it was so. F it was faint. it was clear though. While being in the back room where we believe the woman to be kept, we hear a female voice come over the spirit box that says help. Was that a woman's voice a second ago? Yeah. Was that a woman's voice a second ago? Yeah. It was clear, but it was faint, because you could hear it. Yeah, it's but like, we right, could, right. it sounded like help. Sorry, all right, can you do that again for us? Do it louder. After 20 minutes alone in Randy's reading room, Jesse gets nothing and heads back to base. What the? Did it turn off? It's turned off. Uh, that's, like, that's only happened twice now. Like, look, the button's on. The button's on. Yeah. It's not dying because it's not acting like it's dying. And it worked throughout this entire evening. Alright, good. Y'all are y'all are trying here and I like that, alright? Rossi then takes a camcorder, melmeter, and EVP and goes and sits in the stairwell by himself, while Jesse and Alec go to Teresa's reading room. Uh, I'm gonna be walking up these stairs. Yeah, I was gonna say in high Yeah. running spirit box suppose we have an emf sitting here it went off so we know there's something in here it was sitting there by itself nothing was moving it we're getting weird temperature fluctuations um just like we were upstairs so um we're just going to see if we can ask some questions get any answers responses remember if you if you feel like like threatened or scared turn this flashlight on right here yep all right is there anything in here that wants to talk to us Is, um, is Teresa back in, or Randy, one of the two? I'll go check. Alright, just let me know. Nobody. Oh, who was it? No. Okay, because, uh, I swear I heard a woman talking whenever I was up here. It sounded like maybe squealing, or like it was definitely like a, it was a voice, not like a vehicle outside. Okay, hold on. That, that sounded like a no too, right? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, like no. The woman. Are you Teresa's mother? Are you Rose? She was just checking on you. We're doing mighty fun. Are you are you Teresa's mother? Are you Rose? Is there anything you want to say to Teresa? What do you think we should do? Do you think we should sit here and continue trying to make contact? We can, but... I, I just... I don't know. I want to see if we can... See if it's, uh... Teresa's mother, Rose. Yeah. But at the same time, if... Because she said the no to, do you want to tell us anything? That's true. We did say no to that. Do you want to... Call it, because they said they don't want to talk. Yeah, I think we should, out of respect, mostly. Honestly, I agree. As a final act, we all split up. Alex stays on the lower level of the store to do EVP and SLS. Jesse investigates the reading rooms. I investigate the upper half of the store. Rossi investigates the upstairs, and Caden gets locked in the back room. Uh, take, take one. 
of me trying to contact things on the spirit box. How many of you are in this building? Uh, guys? I think I got a number. I was asking how many of this building, like how many spirits. Uh, I definitely heard the number four, but it was in a girl's voice. All right, if there's anything in here with me, can you please say something? Again, I asked how many of you are here with me currently. I'm, I'm getting children voices, but I got a different number this time. Seven. The, the four was in a pure woman adult voice, but the seven sounded like a little girl. Me and Tech Larry are going there real quick. Uh, a little girl said seven. Fuck us in. I got seven. Did you, did you hear everything I saw? Right? Yeah. Is it dark in here? Yeah. Yeah, I know. When you walk you out. Or your eyes light up. Keep in mind that Alec is an empath, so he's going to sit up there with Caden while he does spirit box and see if he can feel the other spirits in the room to confirm there's four or seven. Okay, let me sit down first. How many, how many spirits are in here? Right. How many of you are in here with me right now? Yeah, I did. It said five. The number keeps changing. Is that, that, that moving? Did that sound like a kid? That did. Yeah, that was a kid. That's f***ing crazy. You made a radio that in? No, keep going. Okay. Should I ask for an age? I counted five as well. Weird. Yeah, I should have said that out loud. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Let me see. Let me ask another. You good? You good? Yeah. Yeah, they walking. They're getting close to me. I thought I saw some right here. Yeah, there's two here, and then there's three over there. Okay, are they and then kids or? I, I I sense women. Women. I heard a little girl. Well, it could have been it. It could have been like a teenager girl, right? I'm gonna sit here. It's not. I'm, I'm not talking like full children. But there's something dark in here. I swear. They need to keep sharing with us. I know. I think it's something dark happened, and they carry that with them. Maybe. Because these are, these are ghosts. These are people. Yeah. Alright. Can you tell us anything about the animal up here? Is it a dog or a cat? That Whoa. sounded weird. That, that was, was a woman singing or crying? It been crying. Crying for sure. Home. Swear to God, it just said run. Yeah, but fair enough. All right, are we not locked? We are locked. Hey, okay. are you guys trying to communicate with us? If it did, just tell us to run. We're to walk if you can't live All right. Well, we were just told to run. So yeah, it just said help me. Uh, yeah, um, maybe. We would like to run. The savior is here. Deciding to heed the spirit's warning, we pack it up and call it a night. The investigation at Spiritual Rose was memorable. With lots of evidence to be proud of, we are really grateful for this experience. With Help Me being a reoccurring theme, we hope this helps the spirit find that peace, and hopefully this will not be our last visit to the store.